Have you ever bought something thinking it's the perfect solution only to find it has one or two features that completely ruin it for you? I had this experience recently when Kmart straight up lied to me about one of their lamps. I bought these mushroom lamps at Kmart for $17 each. They're USB-C rechargeable, they look great, and the light they kick out is nicely diffused and looks really good. Perfect for a bedside lamp. But they have one fatal flaw that, to me, makes them almost useless. The USB-C port. It doesn't work. No, like properly, it doesn't work at all. The same cable that charges my phone just fine doesn't charge this lamp at all. We'll get into why shortly, but I wanted to explain why when I discovered this issue, I went back and purchased another one. These lamps are only 17 bucks, probably about 30 cents US at the moment. They have a built-in battery, they feel solid, and they fit nicely into our bedroom. They have a capacitive button that cycles through three brightness settings and cast a nice diffused glow. They're a good example of a mass-produced, low-cost product that feels higher end than it actually is. Pretty soon after we bought them though, I realized an issue. When I plugged in my USB-C cable to charge it, nothing happened. Eventually, I saw this little tag on the included USB-C cable. I plugged it into the same USB port on my charger and sure enough, it charged. So what gives? What's so special about this particular USB cable? Well, after a bit of probing, it looks like this cable isn't USB-C at all. USB is a defined standard, which means there are some agreed upon specs that everyone needs to use when they're saying something is USB-C. It seems Kmart didn't get the memo. This choice means that if the owner of one of these lamps happens to lose their cable, the lamp becomes e-waste. Once it runs out of battery, it may as well be a paperweight. I hate this kind of thing. It saved Kmart probably a few cents per unit and made the product and user experience so much worse. Additionally, these dodgy USB-C cables could fry people's other devices if they accidentally use it with them. Now, for most people, this dodgy USB-C port is a minor inconvenience. They throw the cable in the drawer and use it when they need to, but for me, this is entirely unacceptable. The whole idea of USB-C is to have a unified standard. Even Apple's using it now. Before I knew it, I'd grabbed another lamp to dissect and figure out if I could solve this issue myself. It turns out these lamps are a zip-tied, hot-glued hodgepodge of modules, batteries and wire, so I felt right at home. After a bit of investigation, this is how the lamp works. This small PCB is the brain of the whole operation. The battery, touch sensor, LEDs and USB-C port all connect to it. When someone touches the button, the PCB detects this and turns on the LED light. If you keep touching it, the PCB cycles through different brightnesses using PWM. PWM works by flashing the light thousands of times a second and altering the length of the flashes to change the brightness. We can't see the flashing, but because the LED is on only some of the time, the brightness is reduced. Our brains almost average the brightness over time. The PCB also has a charging circuit on board that takes the 5 volt input from this dumb single-use USB cable and uses it to charge a small lithium-ion battery that's literally zip-tied to the internals of the lamp. It's surprisingly simple, which means it's also easy to modify into something more useful. My first thought was to just replace the USB-C port with a new one, wired properly of course. But once I saw all the internals laid out, I decided I could probably go one better. If we replace the PCB with something like this ESP32 board, we can give the brain of this lamp a massive upgrade and add all kinds of functionality using ESP Home. This particular one has a charge circuit built in too, so it can manage the battery in the lamp without us needing to add any additional bits and pieces. ESP32s also support touch input, so we can use the existing touch button. We can't connect the LEDs directly to the output pins on the ESP though. Instead, we'll need to use something in between, like a MOSFET, to switch the higher current required for the LED lights. Think of a MOSFET as a tiny electrically controlled switch. If we put it between the battery and the LEDs, we can turn it on with a signal from the ESP32 and allow power to flow from the battery to the lights. 
Using our MOSFET means we can use a little current to turn the MOSFET on and off and have it handle the higher current from the lights. With our plan made, I grabbed our actual bedside lamps and got to work dissecting them to install their new brains. First up, solving the USB problem. I ordered some of these short panel mount USB-C extensions that just required me to open up the hole from the existing USB port a little. A good old step drill made short work of that and these little 3D printed washers will provide a surface for the nut on the USB-C cable to tighten against, both inside and outside the lamp. The USB connectors I used have a chunky strain relief section and I had to shave a bunch of that extra plastic off to help it fit inside. Next, I installed the MOSFET on a piece of strip board and wired the LED, battery, ground and signal wires to the appropriate pins on the strip board and the ESP. For those of you wanting to replicate this at home, I'll include a wiring diagram in the post on my website. Conveniently, the existing battery had the correct connector for us to use with our ESP32. The connector's correct, but the polarity was wrong. So I rearranged them correctly, then soldered the wires onto the strip board to supply the ESP32 with power. The battery is quite low capacity, so if it doesn't hold up, the plan is to replace it with a much larger one. But to be totally honest, these might end up serving as a kind of docking spot for our phone charging cables when we're not sleeping. So it should be sufficient capacity. I soldered the touch sensor wire to another pin on the ESP, then put some heat shrink over the MOSFET board to seal it up and make sure it didn't short against anything. I connected our new USB port to the ESP, wrapped it in some tape to insulate it and stuffed it all inside the lamp. Next was to write some YAML. ESP Home is a fantastic piece of open source software from the same organization that manages the Home Assistant project, Nabucasa. Using ESP Home and just a few lines of code, we can make our lamp controllable in Home Assistant, replicate all the original features, and use the button on the lamp as an input for automations. If you're replicating this project for yourself, check out the link in the description for a copy of my YAML. If you're interested in writing your own YAML for ESP Home, I'm thinking about doing a bit of a tutorial with a basic project a bit down the line that'll include both hardware and software. So if you're interested in that, subscribe and leave a comment letting me know what sort of project you'd like to see. It'll be a bit of work, but there's enough people interested that I think it'll be worth doing and give people an awesome starting point if you're just wanting to get involved. After a little debugging and mucking around, the lamp was working perfectly. Now, I can't take credit for the design of the lamp, but I can take credit for making it dozens of times more useful than it was out of the box. As before, the lamp turns on with the press of a button, but with some Home Assistant automation magic, double tapping the button will turn on and off both lamps. One change from the original functionality is that you can't change the brightness from the button anymore. Because they're not super bright, we use them almost exclusively at full brightness anyway, so replicating this feature wasn't hugely important to us. Holding the button will turn both lamps off, lock the front door and turn off any other lights in the house to give us a bit of peace of mind and save us from having to get up and check. I've also got some automations that will turn the lamps on and off automatically for us. If we turn off the TV to go to bed or walk into the room after dark, they'll both turn on, ready for us to get ready for bed. And they'll turn on in the morning as well when our alarm goes off to try and coax us out of bed. These automations are simple, but improve our evening routine just a little. While our lamps still required us to manually turn them on and off, we rarely use them. Now with the automation, our room has this cozy warm vibe every time we're getting in bed, and that's a little detail I really love. Overall, each of these lamps cost about $7 in parts and an afternoon to fix and substantially improve. All in, they each cost us less than 25 bucks. 
In my mind, they're worth every cent. Oh, oh, and I nearly forgot. They now charge using the same cable as every other USB-C device we own. Problem solved. If you like this video, why not check out one of my other videos? I'm slowly working on building the perfect smart home with a bit of a DIY flair. There's heaps more videos like this one on the way, so get yourself subscribed if you're interested. If you like this video, let me know. If not, tell me why not down in the comments. I'm still learning this whole YouTube thing, so feedback is welcome. And, and Kmart, be better. Catch you next time. Thank you.